So last year, me and my girlfriend luckily had the opportunity to take this lens to Hawaii. On our last day in Maui, we were hiking in Haleakala National Park, where you climb to the top of the volcano and watch the sun over the clouds, which is a really awesome experience, and I totally recommend it if you ever get the chance to go. Anyways, I was filming this short little clip of my girlfriend with my eyes pressed into the viewfinder, and I was walking up behind her, and I thought I was at least a foot away from her, but I was completely wrong. <laughs> I booped her head with full force on my camera and my head by mistake. But let's just pause here for a second. Even with her forehead completely in contact with the lens, she still only filled half of the frame. That's how wide this lens is. And if you're wondering, even after all that, we're still together. So. As you can probably tell, I like wide angle lenses. But what I love even more than wide angle lenses are weird lenses like this. And what happens if I combine a wide angle lens with weird lenses? I end up getting something like this, which is this little guy, an ultra, ultra wide angle lens. It's lightweight, compact, and it takes images like this. This is my Lawa 11mm f4.5 lens. Now you might recognize third-party manufacturers like Tamron, Sigma, and Zeiss, but if you don't recognize the name Lawa, don't worry because they're the newest kids on the block. They just debuted their first lens just a decade ago, and they quickly became my favorite third-party lens manufacturer, for good reason. They don't make any normal lenses, and by normal, I mean your standard 1.4 primes or 2.8 zooms. Instead, Lowell pushes lens designs that have never been done before, like the widest non-fisheye prime lens ever, a 9mm with almost no distortion or the Argus line of lenses, which is filled with prime lenses with sub F1 apertures. Or the most impressive to me is their macro lenses with a 50 times magnification. And the lens that most people will likely recognize them for is the probe lens, which is this lens. And you can use this lens to get shots like this. Now what really sets this lens apart from other lenses is that it's not just an ultra ultra wide angle lens, it's the fact that it's not a fisheye lens and it's a rectier linear lens, which it means it won't distort all the edges of the frame and will keep all the lines straight, which is insanely hard to do on a lens this wide in this small of a package. Now this lens is all manual, all metal, and it's quirky as hell. It's f4.5, not that that really matters on a lens like this. Once you focus beyond 12 inches, everything's gonna be in focus on this lens. So I picked up this lens last year on KEH and I honestly fell in love with this lens pretty much immediately. But I also find this lens to be the most challenging focal length I've ever used. Now, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this thing is hella wide and it makes everything look super weird. This is what 24 millimeters looks like. This is what 16 millimeters looks like. And now this is what 11 millimeters looks like. It's so wide, it actually picks up the circular polarizer on the edges of the photo. This filter is super thin and it still picks this up. So what makes this lens really hard to use is that anything that's not within a couple feet of the lens starts to look like background objects. So this is the lens at four inches. This is the lens at four feet. This is the lens at 10 feet. Oh no. And this is the lens about 20 feet away. As you can tell, I'm really tiny now. Some people think that wide angle lenses mean landscapes, but if you use this lens for your traditional landscape shot, you're going to be really disappointed because you're not gonna see anything because this lens pushes everything so far in the background, you're just gonna be left with a ton of negative space. And if that's not enough, if you're not careful with this lens, you're gonna be capturing your shadow all the time, which is gonna ruin your own shots. But it's these quirks that make this lens really fun to use. Now for me personally, taking good photos is one thing, but my absolute favorite thing to do with this lens is to break all the rules in photography and take really bad cringy photos of my friends and family. Because I know this lens is gonna distort everything like crazy and it's gonna result in some pretty funny images and I know I can go back to those photos for some quick laughs. Now, if you're a pixel peeper, this lens is not gonna be a stellar performer. The sharpness falls off pretty fast in the corners and it's gonna have some really heavy vignetting on the edges. But realistically, that's not what this lens is for anyways. This is not a G Master lens or an Art Series lens or any of those. Now, where this lens truly shines is when you get close up and personal and you want to get a really unique perspective without taking a bunch of room in your bag. You can get crazy images like this in tight spaces or really unique and interesting perspectives using objects to transition from the foreground to the background. I find this lens really makes you feel like you're stepping into a photo sometimes. And if you like panoramas, you can even use a single lens and just crop the top and the bottom. Overall, this is the weirdest lens in my camera bag and definitely carved its own permanent spot for itself. 
Now, should you buy this lens? Well, I wouldn't recommend buying this lens for your first or second lens, or even your third or fourth lens. This lens is really for people who already own a wide angle lens, like a 16 to 35, and thought, hmm, I wish I still had a wider lens. Then maybe this lens is for you. Now, there's not a lot of options out there for ultra, ultra wide angle lenses, but this is an awesome one to just throw in your bag willy nilly without taking too much room in your bag. Or if you think 11 millimeters isn't wide enough, you could even try the Lau's nine millimeter variant. Or if you hate manual focus and you want autofocus, you're just in luck because Lau just released a 10 millimeter F 2.8 full frame, which looks really awesome too. Now, I personally haven't been able to try either of those other two lenses, but I've heard really good things. And Lau, if you're watching, I would love to get my hands on them. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.